This session is brought to you by Zurich Life and Investments. These guys are one of the last true independent life insurers going around and they're Swiss, so you know their stuff is solid. These guys really understand and believe in the value of advice, which is why they invest in programs like this one and partner with groups like XY Advisor to help drive the positive evolution of financial advice in Australia. Their team are just really good people as well. So if you haven't already connected with them to learn more, check out their website or speak to your business development contact. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client's Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout because they're doing some really cool stuff. G'day, Fred. How's it going, mate? Hey, Clayton, man. What's up? Oh, mate, we just started chilling out doing podcasts. Um, We're in the bunker. <laughs> yeah. The crypto bunker down here, everyone. <laughs> it is Clay, deep. Clay, Clay promised he wasn't going to talk about crypto. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is, funnily enough, the last time uh, that anything is getting recorded in this uh this this and so we've got a bunch of axes down here do you know how to play guitar by any chance uh not not as well as everyone else could probably play but um i give it a crack Help. oh man feel I'm free like, to rock I'm out i'm half tempted to do that um <laughs> mate so you, you obviously kicked off uh finder.com.au it was 2006 right yeah with frank with frank yep. frank and i yep um yeah back in the day yeah awesome man and and then two years ago or three years ago released to america mm -hmm. and the uk in january Mate, and, and for anyone, yep. if if someone doesn't know what finder.com.au is, it's a comparison site, but it's highly, it, it gets huge amount of traffic, right? Mm. Uh, it, am I right to say about half a million per month? Uh, uh, so we did um, six million. million, well, six million visits in Australia last month, uh, 12 million <laughs> worldwide in Jan, yeah. Wow. Six million per month. Yeah, yeah. What was the last month at least? Yeah, we, we're trying to get better and we want to be the, the, the number one global destination of comparison. So, you know, we're trying to keep comparing. Our, our mission is to be the Amazon of comparison. My goodness. W w w do you think that there's obviously, <laughs> not do you think, there is obviously a massive demand for this, for this direct-to-consumer, get an answer to a financial question. Yeah. Why do you think that... Um, professionals right mm. so, so so the financial advice community mm. um can't engage with people on that level and yet uh something like finder.com.au can do it insanely well what what are you guys doing that financial advisors aren't you know i think that there's a great partnership with um you know financial advisors and finder i think the two actually work really well together i think the kind of questions we are answer are they're not, I guess, high value to advisors. I think there's a place where advisors have, they're amazing. I have a financial advisor. I, I respect financial advice. I've always have, I've always gone back to one um, or two and, and, and for me personally. And there are some advisors we work with that answer very specific questions. So I think one of the reasons is there's probably not a large amount of money involved in kind of the answers, you know, like what's a balance transfer? Um, what, you know, what's a revert rate? Um, you know, what's stamp duty? Mm. Um, I think there are a number of questions about those and things and we answer those levels. Now, I think where the crossover happens and where advice comes in and where there's maybe, you know, some sort of, I guess, partnership with, with Finder and, and things like that and, and, and obviously advisors can build is there are more complex questions. So, you know, I've got a um, investment property and I've just gotten $100,000 from a, uh, you know, um, uh, inheritance and... I also rent my home. What should I do with the money? Yeah. Now, we're not going to – that's not us. That's not Finder, right? Yeah. So we would go, hey, you know, we, we would answer that question on our side. Hey, you need to get some financial advice. And that's where we would probably refer on to a network of advisors or to an advisor that we know that could do something like that. It's not – that's not our place. Yeah. Um, so I think – and that's one, one, one place. I think for us, you know, we're very associated with product and, and making those endy, end pointy decisions. Again, where traditionally I don't think advisors play in, like there's not that much money in a lot of these things. It's just mm. that we do it on a big scale. So I think technology is sort of facilitating that. Um, 
and and you know, and I think it's just a messy business. It's a lot of data. It's a lot of detail. Mm. Um, you need to scale it. Um, and and you know, we're like more, of, I guess, a technology company, and we're yep. we're pretty good at that. Yes. Um, but I think there's a, 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 like I don't want to. I, I have so much respect for financial advisors and the detailed answers and questions that they have, and we want to work with them. Um, if there's ways that we can do that, you know, I'm. I'm my, my mind's super open. Awesome, man. Yeah. I think that I think a lot of advisors probably do. Like I know that I use Finder with clients. I was having a conversation with a client the other day and she had a balance transfer card. She's in the process of paying off some debt and mm -hmm. uh, balance transfer expired. And we did last time when she set it up, it was we referred her to Finder mm -hmm. and say, jump on there, look at the balance transfer things, find the one with no fees, no transfer um, percentages mm -hmm. or anything, find the longest period and go for it. You know, like uh, I think that's awesome because yeah, I could do that, but... It's not worth. I, I don't want to charge her mm. to, you know, hundreds of dollars to spend an hour go going pouring through the internet to do it. So, yeah. uh, I think that can uh, definitely, you know, support uh, each other and help the work that we do as well. Yeah, you know, I, I think just to build on that, I think it's a great point. You know, if we can, we always see ourselves as the tool, right? You know, and there's, there's certain players in people's life. I think the customer's the hero. They're 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 fighting their way from you know trying to become successful, climbing the mountain. You know. I think the, the, the advisor probably is the oracle, mm. you know, providing those those insights. Those, here's, the, here's the philosophies you want to think about, you know, like Richest Man in Babylon kind of book styles, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, which I love, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think Finder's the tool. Like, you know, we want to be that great source where you could say, okay, what's Finder saying about this? Okay, oh, here's a video to watch about that or here's someone unpack that question or, you know, I, I need to ask this little question about this. Here's our live chat service or something like that. But, yep. you know, and, and, and then you, you know, as an advisor, like, there's no money in that, you know, mm. but we're sort of hopefully facilitating your customer getting a better place where you can have more, a dis, let's have a conversation about, you know, where you're going to, now we got out of debt, now you're getting into so a positive goals, place. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And so you, obviously you're sort of right into the technology space and sort of seeing these things evolve. And I'm sure you've seen a ton in the last decade and a bit mm. since you, since you started. Mm. Is, do you, like, what are your thoughts on where, where we're all going as as consumers of finance and advisors are in the financial space for for individuals uh do you do you see the future as being that that there are just going to be sharper and sharper tools to help people and then you've got the the oracle to uh, to use your words which i would not uh, <laughs> use well maybe for, not for yourself for myself <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes exactly um but is it yeah it, what are your what are your thoughts on on how that progresses so I think everything is to some extent, you know, becoming decentralized. Um, I think the, the, the information is being disseminated, software sort of, you know, replacing a large amount of things. Um, uh, you know, I guess what you're sort of touching on there, maybe Ben, is the um, robo advice and things like that. Yeah. And where's the place of that and where's the place of advisor? So I think that that will get better and better, you know, and, and, and I think, um, you know, you look at things like, um, even today, right, so certain AI and, and certain things and the decisions that they're making, it's getting okay. It's getting better. I don't know. And they can base on rule base and heuristics and things like that. But again, if you think about it, if Finder is answering some very simple basic questions and then a robo-advice is probably answering some even simple, relatively simple but fundamental questions, I think still there's that advice place where it's like, okay, well, what is the framework what you know, there are human components that, for a very long time, are still going to need to be um, taken account of, um, which I don't, I'm not sure if computers have actually will, will or yet have come to solve. I think that most AIs being developed, you know, like most most things in the world, they go to the places where they make the most money first. So probably the military, um, <laughs> pornography, um, pornography, <laughs> um, um, pills, porn, and casino. Right, <laughs> you're right. Um, <laughs> Um, gambling, uh, so the stock market, um, <laughs> cryptocurrency. Crypto. Um, I was about to slide that in there yeah, if you didn't. Just, 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 yeah, for free. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's where they're probably going to start. Now, advice is probably near that, but I think advice is really about custodianship and care, right? I think that's where that's the place I believe that financial advisors are coming from, right? You're taking care of someone's money and helping them and advising them. That's where I would. I believe that I'm, I'm assuming that's where the philosophy of financial advice comes from, custodianship of their money, custodianship mm. of them as a person. And that's where I, 
I believe in that. I think it's fantastic. Now, I don't think computers yet have quite got that whole pic- picture. You know, why would you not invest in this oil company? It's like, well, I my father died of lung cancer. You know, um, <laughs> okay, right. You know, there's... I am sorry for your loss. Yeah, sorry for your loss, you know. You know. But, you know, I'm sure that computers... You know, maybe you forecast, I don't know, 50 years potentially. I don't know, maybe 100. There's a lot of there's a, a lot of journeys that need to need to happen. You know, maybe medicine probably might be a place that it might go to first. But I think that's the category or evolution of the area where it's going to take. So I think it's going to take a while. So I'm safe. I'm safe for my career at least, do you think? I, I think Next so. Next couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you, you may go, you know, for budgeting and basic stuff like, hey, use this tool with, an, you know, has AI built into it. And then now then now you've gone to this place. Oh, great. Now let's have a conversation about um, long-term planning. Let's have a conversation about life goals and what kind of people that, you, you know, that's where I come to an advisor, even myself, right? I go to an advisor and I say, look, I'm trying to achieve this, you know, and, I, and then they might say, they, they'll come to you and give me, many different angles of that and say, look, actually, here's the reality. I've seen t- for 25 years, 10,000 clients, and this is what I've seen them do over time. And here is my suggestion based on that. Now, you'd need to read all of that into a computer, which is possible. It's going to take a long time to do. But that yeah. kind of cu- like human care and custodianship, that takes a little while to build up. Man, I got a, I got a question. I think you got a really good insight. And I may already know the answer to this question. You've, you've, 2006, this puts you over a decade of watching the trends of the, the retail uh, finance market. Um, have you found anything recently that is outrageously in high demand? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've put you into a corner here, guilty. There's only, uh, yeah, like let's bring it out of the bag. Let's put yeah. it onto the table. Yeah. Um, I think cryptocurrency has to be that Definitely. thing. Um, and I, I, I'm happy to talk about that in terms of, I have some ideas in terms of financial advice and Would love know, some to principles. Hear it. Would love to hear it because I feel like I'm yeah. the only person in financial advice that's happy to talk about it. Okay. So what, what's your feeling? You know, I, I want to start by saying, look, if you're advising your client on finan- on cryptocurrency, start with the premise that it all goes to zero. Don't yeah. play with money that, don't borrow on your credit card, don't mortgage your house. Okay, there are people that have done this and all those kind of things, but there are a lot of people that have lost huge sums of money in cryptocurrency for all sorts of reasons. Yep. Um, that's, that's, that's a very conservative approach. That's my view, but you start from that basis. Now, yep. if someone wants to t- go outside that, which I'm sure you guys have clients that go way outside that, that's up to them. That's their life, and, you know, and that, that's fine. Um, I do think straight up that cryptocurrency needs to become part of a consideration set. It's not going anywhere. In yeah. fact, it's going the other way. It's becoming more and more apparent. Um, you can use it for money transfers. There is t- there is actual practical. You know, if you need money moved around the world very quickly for whatever reason. You know, obviously, for, you know, I'm sure you, clients would give that have that question all the time. That is a valid form. You can buy a cryptocurrency immediately. You can send it to someone. It will transfer the exa- in, in 10 minutes mm. and then they can cash it out. Um, and, and that sounds crazy, but that's a reality, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, the other view, and this is a more economic high-level worldview, is that if you are advising someone, I, I could imagine over 10, 12, 25, 30 years, I think there should be a hedge on fiat currency. Um, now, I know a lot of people go towards gold, they go towards silver um, property and things like that. I think they're great assets. But there is also, I believe, another form, which is cryptocurrency. And the reason what the benefit I believe it provides is is, is extremely fast liquidity. Yep. Um, you know, and that's, a, that's, a, that's something which, you know, shares still take two or three days. Yeah, which is crazy, right? Right. Yeah. Now, imagine if, imagine a world, but I, I think this is quite close, but imagine a world where you can just buy a coffee with, with Bitcoin. Um, but you're also storing that Bitcoin there as like gold, because I think Bitcoin's like gold. Ethereum's like um, like MS DOS, or I call it MS DOS because I don't think the right. Windows or iOS has come about. Litecoin is, you know, um, and, and Zcash and Monero are very much privacy and speed of speed of transfer. There are new coins and new platforms being built, but the, we're in infrastructure phase. So remember when the internet started? Um, the internet was infrastructure in the beginning remember the domain name companies came and they were worth everything and then then we had hosting companies 
the actual real life applications are still yet to come. Like the ones totally. that are here and now. Um, but if you, as a client and as, and as, as anyone, you get not, I think it's, it's mildly irresponsible not to be involved and not to encourage your client to understand cryptocurrency today. For some reason, advisors are burying their heads in the sand massively. Uh, it's almost a taboo subject to talk about, even though it's been, uh, I think, about 10 years since, mm-hmm. since Bitcoin was created. And we just had a huge bubble and it didn't go to zero. What happened? Why yeah. did that not happen? It's, yeah. Yeah, it's still uh, ten thousand Australian, right? I think we just cracked. Yeah, I think we just cracked eleven thousand again today. This morning had a, had a breakout. Yeah, crazy. I saw one of my clients that I was speaking to earlier today. She uh, she's got a she's put some money into crypto, and so I sort of track the value of of her stuff. And I was on this site that I tracked the value on, and I noticed that uh, in the last twenty four hours, Jesus Coin is the best performing cryptocurrency. <laughs> it's up eleven hundred and thirty seven percent, and the market cap. <laughs> Has gone from 1.9 million to like or to 1.6 million to 19 million dollars. Truly, the is the second coming of uh, crypto. Jesus coin. Yep, that's yeah. where it's at. I can talk a bit about that. You know, my I have some very strong views on that, and I think I, I, I think there is going to be a crash of some of these coins. It's it's their true roadmaps and reality of what they're doing and what they've promised. I met a lot of people, a lot of companies with just a roadmap not a product, a big team and $25 million and a bunch of 20 year olds sitting in an office in the Gherkin in the middle of London um, (laughs) with an office that would probably cost 40,000 pounds a month. And they're probably focused a little bit more too much on the ping pong table and not so much on the actual (laughs) situation that's going on. And that's straight up. That's that's, but that was the internet, right? There used to be a company that tracked um, ping pong sales Long table sales in really? Silicon, and you could basically track the performance of Silicon Valley based on that. So if you if you measured the performance, anyway, there's a correlation. Anyway, um, ju- I just want to submit that's going to happen. So yeah. if you want to take a conservative approach to this, I have I, I would clump a little bit towards the, the traditionals. I think Ethereum has now become a traditional. Mm. That is a platform. I have seen. I was pitched 25 different ICOs that are all running on a run on the Ethereum platform a day for five days straight in London. And I, sh- I assure you now that thing is not going anywhere. It's too much adoption. We, I, had a, we, I was at a hackathon. I coded my first smart contract in Ethereum. This is not like going to disappear. It's too much on it. Because I was thinking uh, the newer platforms were going to come in and, and, and make Ethereum in particular defunct. But you're, you're suggesting it's the opposite. It's actually getting more steam. It's 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 going to keep going. It's got a great development team. It's got a great leader. I, I, it may. It may. There might be better things. Sure. Right. But I don't think they're standing still. They're trying to fix their things. They're trying to adjust. Yeah. Um, I, I think the other new platforms, what's going to happen with them is they're like the shiny thing. Oh, it's the new thing. But here's my submission is there are probably 25 fundamental problems that Ethereum has experienced and solved that they are going to have to now experience. You know, like yeah. when you're in the game for a while, you've, you've, it, it's just, it's just companies get experience, right? I think, um, yeah, I, I don't want to get too speculative on that. And, but just sure. want to come back to something you were talking about before. I think it was a really good point. Um, is, yeah, I guess this negativity against cryptocurrency and those kind of things. Um, yeah, keen to, I think that's a really important point. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I don't understand that, to be honest with you. I, I think, because I think potentially some people have experienced and seen bubbles where, you know, it was avocado plantations and emu farms and all those kind of things. And most things do look like that, you know. But this one, the, the big challenge is, is if you think, and here's my submission, if you think that this is a scam or this is a pyramid um, scheme or a Ponzi scheme or um, it's non-existent, you sound a bit like someone who's looking at the early internet. <laughs> yeah, good um, the person who says, why would I get an email if I can send a letter? <laughs> Very good point. Um, what, and just because, again, you've got such a good insight here, what percentage of your traffic now mm. is cryptocurrency based? Whew, it was, January was huge. Um, it could have been between, I don't know, 5 to 20. I'm not exactly sure of the exact numbers, sure. but it was right up there. But but it, it's blown up as far as uh, what percentage it growth, was yeah. within 12 months. Yeah, huge growth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it is a dangerous place. Like, it is, it's it's scary. It's new. It's unfamiliar. And I understand that and I appreciate that. Um, and, and, and that's cool. It's just, I think, as a business, what we try and do 
is um, adapt. You know, and we want to help people make these decisions, right? There are new yeah. decisions being made all the time. And we want to just be, like you were saying before, is let's be that basic place to give those answers. You know, I want to buy this coin. Where do you go? Yeah. That's a good, not, it's not, that's not a, like a complex question, but we're good at that. Yes. You know? Then where there's the advisors, I think it could be like, okay, like the, I was talking about just before, that real high level part where we're really fine I can't get into is like, what coins should you buy? What's your approach to this? Yeah. Um, how do you, you know, how should you uh, factor this in in your overall goals and personal portfolios? Yeah. That should be financial advice. Yes. Like we, we've we been uh, uh, through finder.com.au, we've been uh, putting forward our, our predictions. Mm -hmm. Me and you, I uh, think there's um, The Wire yep. uh, and there's another futurist and then there's a few more people actually this month. Um, and people are really tapping into that, aren't they? Mm. That, that people are undoubtedly interested in this mm. and as we've already specified and I think without a shadow of a doubt, it's not going away. It's not some... Glo I, I, I'll admit, I thought it was a scam for a long, long time. Probably, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up buying uh, when it was like 3,500 Bitcoin in particular. So that was June last year. Mm. So for nine years, I said, no, mm. that is dodgy. Um, and though I, I still had never recommended it to a client and it wasn't really even a conversation if you go back for uh, more than six months but to suggest it's going away I think is uh, I think is a little bit short-sighted mm. and um, and and mate it's been really good to have you on uh, uh, financial planning talking about crypto because I always get in trouble so at least we've got an expert here now to uh, <laughs> stick you in your place Ben <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah moving on though I uh, I've heard rumors of this Australia Day story. <laughs> so uh, I was speaking with, with Michelle earlier. Now, um, Australia Day, everyone lo loves a good party, yeah. right? Uh, but in, in the same fact that you're going to become the Amazon of comparisons, right? So you, you don't like to go small. Can you let us in on, on this Australia Day party? All right. We'll have a, this is this is a this is a private story, but we'll just we'll let it out just for you guys listening, um, guys and girls. Um, actually, my sister met her uh, current husband at um, the the famous Australia Day party. So so for for three years, Frank and I hosted a party on Australia Day, um, and at our house, and um, um, and um, you know it was a great party. And for the third year, we said right. It's time to go big. And let's make this the most special event ever. So we, this is before Facebook, right? That was really big. We put a website up and it was called australiadayparty.com.au and we started getting signups in the hundreds, like just people coming in from like, no one had ever seen a website for a party. And we're like, this is a serious party. So we started calling up Bundaberg Rum and said, hey guys, you want to sponsor this? This is going to be a huge party. Um, we called up um, Sergeant Pies, Master Foods gave us like, 10 boxes of sauce. Dude. So we had the pies, we had That's the sauce, we had, sauce. We, had, we, had, we had Bundaberg, like huge cases of Bundaberg. Um, we had the hula hoop sponsored. Um, we had um, we had a DJ, we had kegs. And then I was like, it's good, it's good, it's good, but it's just not quite there. Like it's just a party. It's not quite right. And we're sitting there, so I said, no, chow, it's not enough. Chow's Frank, as Frank's uh, nickname. It's not enough. It's not enough. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, it's, no one's going to talk about this. Like, it's just another party, whatever. Yeah, it's a website, whatever, blah, blah, So we need something, like a spectacle. Something that's going to, like, oh, be out of control. And I said, and we're sitting up, and, and we're coming up with ideas, uh, and, uh, and then we said, what's Australia about? It's like, oh, the beach. Yeah, the beach. Let's make a backyard beach. What? So we, so we called up, so go, okay, okay, let's do it. So we got black plastic and we covered this tiny little like 10 meter by 7 meter backyard, you know, in <laughs> yeah, Sydney, yeah, yeah, near the yeah. freeway, tiny little place, covered it in black paint. Call up a sand company. Like, hey man, can I just no. get uh, five tons of sand? <laughs> he's like, yeah, sorry. The truck pulls up, right? And he's like, I'm like, I'm like, he's like where do you want it? I'm like, oh, on the street, that'll do. <laughs> Chunk on the street, five tons of sand, like beautiful, pristine sand. The boys are like, we're just... Wheel wheelbarrowing this in the backyard <laughs> turns into the most beautiful beach. Everyone comes in and we're draw dressed in bikinis. It was like a it was basically a backyard beach Australia Day party. Dude, um, that's epic. Everyone's not sponsored wearing sponsored by Bundaberg. Sponsored by Bundaberg, Sergeant Pies, Master Foods. I still talk about it today. They're a great company and they supported us. 
Uh, and full credit to them. We've been caring. We've been obviously promoting them for how long? I don't know how, many, how long that's been now. <laughs> but regardless, they they trusted us, and I think you know they deserve that, and we'll, we'll help them out forever. But um, it was we had security guards what? in our house. We had we had a first aid kit because we realized you had to hit a certain you know, hit a certain <laughs> number of people. You got to get that. Really? Like, is in a, a legal uh, requirement? Mm, we hit we hit that legal level. We we mail dropped everyone around us. We we're like we're gonna have a massive party. La la la. We had no police. We had an accident. We got we cleaned that up. You know, everyone everyone turned out fine. We we it went the smoothest party. We had not a single complaint. It was it was it was basically a professionally run Dude, party. That's so awesome. It was good fun. My and my my sister got a, got a husband. Um, <laughs> actually, yeah, we got it was getting pretty crazy, and and, and um, we actually pulled the site down at one point. We we're like, oh, we're gonna hear like ten thousand people. What um, the hell? I don't know how many people came through. That I have no idea. Is this before or after you'd actually started Finder? Oh, before. Yeah, we had we had the other company, the digital agency, running at the time. Um, right, and yes. Frank and I used to live together. We lived together for two and a half years, and we actually ran the house like an Airbnb <laughs> before there was Airbnb. We had three rooms. So we had we had our two and three others and we had 21 people through the house in two and a half years. So we just like, you want to come in? You stay? Yep, this is the price. Short-term stay, quick bond, <laughs> on, on, go, 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 go. So we ran it. So because we needed, we had no money. Like we were living off tin spaghetti. We had no toilet paper. Like we were just <laughs> living off everything, right? Doing whatever it takes to, to get alive and get hustling. And we born, we, we birthed a Finder from another company, which was a ventures company, an experiment. Uh, and uh, essentially we, we took a number of ideas and we put some money. One was a poker company, one was a, a Mother's Day presents, one was a, um, a Sudoku site, one was actually anzacday.com.au. We bought that and anyway, we gave it to eventually to the Anzacs. They weren't too happy about that. <laughs> selling, mem- selling memorabilia and stuff. Anyway, so Credit Card Finder was one of them and um, actually it was a crew that actually helped us put it together as well. And, right. and, and um yeah, and that turned out eventually we kept we sold that the other business and then we went and went back to our ideas and we started them up again and that's how Finder grew. So you, you had creditcardfinder.com earlier. Sitting in yeah, just on ice while we um yeah, just ticking away and then we had to put it on ice while we sold the company. Was anyone doing comparison before you? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I select probably well, I don't know, five, six years older than us. Lots of companies are a lot older than us. Um it's not, yeah, and in the UK and the US, massive competitors, but I think we, you know, we do a good job of um, really getting and solving those problems that people have that are that are, that are a little bit unusual and a little bit um, outside the box, like we're talking about Ben, like, um, I think we do a good job of that. And so was the strategy to, to, grow, to grow Finder, was it um, conscious around the education or is that something that evolved over time as you, as you grew? Um, from the beginning, I've always believed in, um, I'm, I'm actually an, an old school direct marketer. So, uh, in direct marketing, uh, I believe in education. I believe in, um, solving people's problems one-to-one. Um, and essentially I would write about digital marketing when I was running the agency and I would write about helping people how to do it. And I'd host conferences and host events. Um, I actually hosted my own Fred Jabez's 11 secrets online marketing, you know, the events and people came, there was, you know, 300 people, came through that, but they learned the fundamentals, right? And so I've always believed in education and helping people that way. And then you're seen as an expert, right, to some extent. And then from that point, you can then make, provide information. So it's always been the core of Finder. Um, And our second value of Finder is called Empower People, which is, um, we have five values. Um, And our belief is to, instead of giving them the answer, um, well, we want to teach you um, how to fish, basically. So don't give a fish, teach you how to fish. And so... Yes, there's a people complain, you know, oh, it's got so much content. It's so, you know, like there's too much content. You should simplify it and all those things. I'm like, mm, actually, no, we like we like how it is because we want to serve people and serve and empower them and teach them so that they can come back and then use Finder very uh, in, in an empowered way. Yeah. Awesome, man. And so with the with the content, it, it, you know, what are the learnings that over oh, because you've been at it for, for quite mm. a while, but in terms of the types of content that that people engage with and what's, you know, because obviously a lot of people in the XY advisor community are doing content in different forms, you know, mm. blogging, video blogging, mm. um, we had a had a, uh, a podcast in earlier, uh, Chris Bates doing um, LinkedIn short form like mini blogs and all that sort of stuff. W- w- yeah, what are the, the the learnings from from that vast experience about how to make content more engaging or create content that people engage with? Mm. Um, 
I I think it's really important to um, I, I I guess the way I look at it, and this is just my view. We have a lot of editors and a lot of writers who are incredible. It's just this is just my personal view, but they have it. They're they're amazing, even better than me, way better. They understand you know the audiences and 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 solving people's problems. But I think it comes back to a couple of things, and this is what I look at is. Um, what is the burning question fundamentally underpinning your customer right now that's stopping them from getting a better life? Um, and if you take that question and, and answer it for them and be the authority and, and then normally what comes from that is another question. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and then you might go and answer that question. Um, and then there'll be any potentially a whole series of other parts of that journey right so it's it and when, when you think about that what you're doing is you're starting from a place of authority right where are you as an individual where are you the best at what 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 should you go and talk to you about um so obviously if you, you know coming to find it there's a whole range of things and problems that we see that are nearby and we continually try and solve those problems and we, we're on a massive journey to compare everything so it's gonna take a long time um but i think you know if i was an advisor and i was starting to write some content i think i would find a real burning problem you know, my, three of my clients last week said this exact same question. Okay, well, that seems to be a signal, right? Let's go and answer that question. Or the most important page on our site that we keep seeing all the traffic go to is this one on um, Western Australian um, stamp duty law. I don't know why, but for some reason, everyone goes to that page because you've uniquely answered it in some way and you've you've t you've hit that you know you've scratched someone's itch if that makes sense i always start from the what's the scratch and then you know provide the itch if that makes sense yeah um and then in terms of i guess you're talking about i guess format and things like that um i still think people read um i think i definitely think people still want, want to watch video these days they want to listen to podcasts as well i think these mediums you know in the u.s and the uk u.s podcasts are massive yeah. Um, and they're becoming even bigger. They're very easy to access. I think in Australia, it's really becoming quite a thing. Um, I think video and, and Facebook, that little scroll and playing some sort of short video and con condensing it down to short snippets, we're experimenting a little bit with that. I think Twitter's moving a little bit towards that as well, which would be very interesting as well. Um, I think it, that comes back to what are you good at? You know, if, what are you good at? Are you good at writing stuff? All right, we'll write. Yeah. If you're good at... Um, Videos, do that. If you got a voice for, you know, radio, do a podcast. You know, if you got a face for radio. Yeah, if you got a, you know, <laughs> this is why I haven't done any videos. In my business. <laughs> yeah, no, but maybe that's maybe that maybe you should have a try, Ben, because I think um, I think you'll find your audience and, and people will appeal to the, to to you. You know, and that, that at the end of the day, you will find the people that resonate with you, and then from there, just talk to them and solve their problems all day. You know, that's what people want. They everyone's busy. Just. Help me get my job done. Help me live a better life. Yeah. That's how I think about it. Is awesome, that, man. I, I yeah. don't know if that... that yeah. yeah. No, that, no, no, that's great tips. And I agree that you've got to sort of use your use your medium that, that, that works for you. But uh, yeah, great to... Because you, you hear people talking about, you know, you've got to be solving problems. And um, I, I suppose the success of what you guys are doing, it, it shows that in practice. Have you found, though, that like going in, in, into sort of one layer deeper that any particular format is uh, works better for the mm. content or um any, like e even in terms of the l level of detail because obviously you must get people from some some people mm. with no knowledge with the basic knowledge or you probably get people with a ton of knowledge on certain things how do you cater for that or do you just you i suppose you're big enough that you would cover everything you know i think there are four there are four types of users um but that that they the way they uh, interact with websites. So, um, and, and these are the, the two big ones that I think are relevant to this are impulsive and the researcher. So the impulsive person is the person who tend to, you know, they downloaded those annoying ringtones and they got caught up, caught up in those and they buy the packs of gum at the supermarket, right? They're impulsive buyers. They just want to like, let's just buy it and get on with it, right? Yeah. Um, the researcher is the one who's going to read every single detail. So you're trying, I think what you're saying there is what's the balance between those um, two things. The other one is the competitive and the humanitarian. The humanitarian wants to know who are you and what is behind this and what is your purpose. Mm. Um, the competitive says, I just want to be the best. <laughs> Give me the best. I want to be better than That's everyone clear. else. You know, I want to be the best. And they're, they're fantastic, you know, all, all those, but that's how people, that I think that's how they consume the internet to some extent, right? 
So, so going back to that, what we try and do is try and cater to those different personality types as best we can. Wow. How? C- considering they're also different. So it's just about um, different sections of the site and different avenues and, and paths that those customers take. And you can see them clearly, right? So an example, uh, a humanitarian uh, customer will go to your About Us page and they will read every single word. They will go and look at your team. They'll look you up on LinkedIn they're going to come and tell you something like the Australia party um, <laughs> that you were like, wow, this person's like, they'll, they'll come to you and say, you know, um, you know, Clayton, it's, a, it's, um, I, 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 I believe in um, forestry as well. I noticed that you wrote this thing at this thing and they're like, that you're like, whoa, okay. Wow. You're like you, you deeply believe in stuff. It's like, you know, they're very principle orientated, um, idealists, I would put them in that category, right? And there's a lot of, that's a large percentage of, of the world. Um, if you look at personality types, idealists are one of the biggest categories because they want to believe in something, right? Um, and so on that page, people normally write about us pages and it's like, oh, I just got to write my about us page. And it's just like, whatever. It's probably one of the most important pages on your site. I'd say the second, one of the, either, either the second or third most important page if you want to target that audience and that segment. And you need to target each, each of them. So, trying to go back to all the way back then to your, to your question in terms of format. Um, we try and give a li- as little or as, uh, you know, as much as someone wants, depending on their personality. Right. And, and over time you need to cultivate techniques in each of those sections to be able to target them. So yeah. the impulse is just like, just give me the comparison. Yeah. I just want to see the products and I just want to click the button. I just want the cheapest one. Like, I just want to be done with this. Just give me one. I'm done. Thanks very much. The research is going to be like, okay, that's cool. What brands? Okay, what's the methodology behind this? Okay, what what what's this going to do afterwards? Oh, this is interesting with this rates, you know, and they'll they'll get on and really dig in and find mm. things. The engineers, yeah, the, the engineers. Or if you look at um, you know, the book, the Tipping Point, they're kind of the mavens. Okay. Uh, the ones that research deeply, they know, you know, they read all the coupons. They know all the coupons. They know all the um. You know those magazines that get dropped off in the mail? Yeah. They'll read them all. <laughs> oh, man. And they'll go, they'll go. oh, by the way, if someone says, hey, I'm, re- I'm, you know, I'm looking to, you know, I really like bananas. Like, hey, do you know there's like there's a, there's a, there's a sale on it? Um, or worse, for two ninety nine dollars to get bananas? And you'd you be say, that's like, not cheap. Like, two ninety nine. that's still expensive. Man. Yeah. You need more magazines. Yeah, you're like, whoa. Like, but, but, and you should speak to, you should speak to Mark, um, who's in the fresh food area, because then he knew, can tell you where the best bananas are. <laughs> right, but that level of detail and research is unusual, right? And yes. that's, you'd, you'd think that's everyone, but it's not. Yeah. So you should, you know, and, and, and catering to each of those <laughs> takes time, right? For sure. So, so words like, so if Clayton, if you're more in that competitive space, you want to see benchmark. Mm. You want to see words like best. You want to see like top 10. You want to see, you know, like, like expert recommended, in, you know, here's the inside angle. Here's the one that no one else is looking at that's going to, you know, like you were talking about with the with the um, new networks and the new platforms coming out like EOS mm-hmm. and Cardano and uh, NEM yeah. and those yep. kind of things. I think I totally understand that. Sorry, but that probably went a little too far <laughs> for our audience. Right? Or, Fair unless enough. We Fair should enough. research that. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, and I think what that is is a journey, right? So your video are kind of impulsive, kind of researchers, but they're probably going to go in and watch that and then they watch one little short snippet and then they're going to move on. I have another theory that... Um, um, people's attention span is actually only about seven seconds, like max. And then their, their brain goes on to something else. Yep. Um, uh, maybe that's just me, but like, um, <laughs> I just don't think it, I don't just think the human brain's built. It's like not, I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't have any, any, any mathematics behind this or science, but I've just noticed that after seven seconds, you kind of get done. You're like, oh, just, you know, so try and segment your stuff as best you can, depending on how complex your topic is into really, short butt size things yeah that's amazing like uh so interesting to hear the the yeah the the triggers for the different uh for the different segments and i think uh yeah it's amazing i suppose that's why credit to uh the growth of your what you're doing that to to be across that but how do you learn how do you learn that well, you listen to great podcasts and you join an awesome <laughs> advisory network that brings in great speakers. That's step one. Um, and unpicks and asks very tough questions to learn and help grow your business. Yes. That's step one. Awesome. Um, you know, I met a very, you know, it goes back to what you are saying before. I, you know, Picasso painted a, a picture in seven minutes and, and the person who painted it for asked how much is it going to cost and he said, 
$100,000, but you only spent seven minutes. Like, no, that took me 25 years. Yeah. You know, so it's taken me a long time to gather from a lot of different people. And then I put my own money up and tested this. I've done a lot of experience through a lot of different categories. Um, it's, it's experience to some extent. Um, there is unfortunately, yeah, no school you can really go to. Um, and I, I think it comes back to, um, getting out there and meeting experts. I met, I met a, one guy who doesn't even, even do this work anymore. And he talked about conversion optimization before anyone was talking about conversion optimization. And he wrote a book, which was actually impossible to read. It was <laughs> genuinely impossible. <laughs> but if you unpick it and unpack it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and essentially those things are hiding in, the, I look in the places that no one else is going to. And I find, um, I guess people who, um, I guess they, I, I do this now. I, I don't read newsletters. I, I don't read, I don't listen to, you know, um, a lot of, uh, I guess, you know, those articles like here's the latest way to do financial advice about this. And this is the way and everyone's going to, you know, and this is how we did it. And we made this. It's like, yeah, that's your business. Yeah. I think when you get to a certain point in a company, you come back and you go, okay, well, that's good. And we got some ideas to get up to this place. But now if you want to grow your company, I believe you need to figure out what's good for you. Like a product manager and a salesperson in other companies probably would do this, but a product manager or a publisher or a writer at Finder may not do so well. They do that. They need to do it the Finder way. So, you, sure. so, so really what I'm trying to submit is you, that insight came from me unpacking someone else's idea, but then adapting it to the internet it was almost a bit oblique and lateral um so maybe reading um reading books on influence in that case yep um, and then unpacking that and taking the ideas and then reapplying them to your business that's that have you ever be. considered writing a book well well because um, i know i know i know that you're an author mm, but yeah i i i just wonder like yet what people want me to write about that, um, write about that, all that stuff. Definitely, definitely. Like content and... Uh, I could be, as you said, you used to be a director market marketer, right? Mm. And, and, and I think that that background gave you an outrageously great insight into how to connect to people to help them, you know, lead them on a path to make a decision, mm. which you've blown up, you know, in an atomic way. Mm. Um, who who's your biggest competition in the US? Uh, there's a lot, you know, Nerd Wallet, uh, CreditCards.com, Credit Karma. What what kind of what um, kind of uh, audience are they getting? Huge. Uh, so uh, Nerd Wallet's about four hundred people. Uh, CreditCards.com's <laughs> probably touching the thousand. They just got bought for one point four billion in cash. Well, um, so this is this is serious. Yeah, enterprises. Um, are but, you guys listing by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a little early, early, early IPO. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in on the early exactly. raise, the pre-sale, yeah. the pre-pre-sale forty percent discount <laughs> the ICO. Man. Um, we we we. I think that there is a time when a company, uh, you know, is good for a company to list. Um, I don't think that's the time right now for Finder. I think Finder's good. It's having great growth. Um, it would. It, it's not, it might be, I almost see it as a mild distraction, I think, from our core business right now. Um, we're very focused on our mission to compare everything. Um, we want to do this around the world. We're doing a number of different languages. So it's not right now. Sure. Um, we do have some other businesses, some very exciting businesses that we are, that are adjacent and nearby that, that we're launching right now. Really? Um, yeah. Can, is, can we, can we, ooh. ooh. I don't know where, where the line is on this. <laughs> um, um, uh, I, I can talk. I this fight. I can talk a little bit about it. So um, we are launching a, an ability for people to buy uh, cryptocurrency through us. Awesome. Um, so you can, and you can buy uh, between, say, a quarter of a million to up to even $300 million of Bitcoin. Um, Whoa. So big transactions. Yeah. So it's very hard to get access to that in Australia. And um, we yeah. can provide that access. Um, Ethereum, we can do Ethereum like... Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, and Ripple, um, for now. Right. Um, but we can give you that um, with a, with a confirmed transaction. We can send that like a uh, million dollars of Bitcoin in ten minutes. Oh my god, that's 
Wow. Yeah. So that's a good. That's a good. It's it's we're working really hard on this, and we've got a really great team behind that putting it because it's it's a problem we've noticed. It's like how do you get access to these cryptocurrencies? Yes. Um, we only want to deal with sophisticated investors. Well, clearly, um, yeah. So for now, um, we do will have a potentially you could think about a retail offering. So we are working on that as well. Um, that's one area. Um, we have a number of other things. I, I can't quite talk <laughs> about them right now. But totally. Cryptocurrency, watch that space definitely. Um, and we have there's a couple of other businesses that um, we're looking at. But if you imagine, um, I guess Amazon when it was an e-commerce site. Um, you know, and really being that and then evolving into a, a technology company. I think yep. Finders at that point now where we're going from being a, uh, a comparison site to being a technology company because um, our customers want more things solved and we, we can't find products or, or solutions to help them do that. Um, and so and part of that's also solving our own problems. We also want to solve other companies' problems as well. So... Um, you know, there's, there's there's one we've touched on. But I can't I can't quite. Uh, you'll see. You can wind back the, the this podcast and back in time. But you'll see. But we're really trying to. Um, we really want to be a great employer in Australia. We want to be an example of a great technology company in Australia. We want to create jobs uh, in Australia and around the world. Um, and we think there's no reason why Australian companies can't be technology companies. Um, so we want to be one of those companies, and we want to help you know, drive Australia forward like that and give examples. And I'm trying to educate and help as best I can along the way. But that's, we want to be that company. We want to bring a lot of interest and, and talent into this country and also create a lot of jobs. So awesome, mate. Look, I, I, we realize you're super busy. So um, uh, is, is there any way that, so you, people can go onto finder.com.au um, if, if they want to reach out to anyone in your team for whatever reason, where, where's the best way to do that? You know, um, I I don't I'm not on Facebook. I left Facebook in 2012. Nice, um, good play. Because I don't think it's constructive for people's lives. Um, <laughs> I think it creates. Anyway, we can get into that later. But um, LinkedIn, I took I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I want to help people grow their business, and so I think I, I try and share and create a network. So contact me on LinkedIn. Um, very easy to find me. My last name Shabesta is pretty obvious. Um, and then if you want to speak to me, I'm on WhatsApp. I don't use um, Messenger because I need an international uh, platform. Yeah, of course. Um, but LinkedIn, follow me on LinkedIn. I write about all the things I'm seeing. I try and help people. You can come along to my events. So I have a schedule of events as well. Um, How do people learn about that? Uh, so I'm, we're rebuilding my site, my own personal site. So you can follow me there. But on LinkedIn, I always post about, I'm, I'm in this country. I'm talking at this event. Cool. Um, so you can follow along there. Um, one thing I just want to say, we are, this is really out there, <laughs> but a lot of people have been asking me, um, I am bringing out an accessories line. Um, so I know it sounds bizarre, but my own brand of, um, jewelry and accessories for the modern, uh, for the future, for the people for the, who are from the future, basically. Man, that's cool. Cause I was looking at your ring actually. Yeah. This is, um, a lot of different symbols that I'm very passionate about. And I think they bring a lot of, um, voltage to people. Um, crank up your voltage a bit, you know, get the energy up there. Awesome, man. Um, so yeah, you're gonna, you, you'll still see this. It's a new, new line. Um, and I want to help it represent, um, and empower people and inspire them. Could you, uh, uh could you design an XY t-shirt? I could. <laughs> could do a collab with my brand. That um, would be so cool. Yeah. Locked in, locked in. I've got a great finder t-shirt actually from, uh, from the FinCon conference in the States. We oh. had a ball with the, with the, uh, US finder. You got the you, FinCon shirt? It, yours one was, was the best one. Of all the, like the promo shirts there, it was good. It was the only one I kept apart from the actual FinCon t-shirt. So props to your peeps over there. That's, um, Michelle's, yeah. She, <laughs> Boom, go Michelle. Uh, um, you know, that's a rare item I'd keep that. That's a... <laughs> Limited it. edition. Yeah. That's Man, you should have brought it here. You could have had it signed. Oh, damn it. That'd have been cool. Yeah. Very Next cool. Time. Next time. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, uh, and also on Twitter, right? You, can people follow you on Twitter? Yeah, I'm not as active on Twitter. I just, I yeah. really, uh, LinkedIn for me because I want to, I want to basically communicate and, and there's a messaging platform there and I want everyone to be able to, everyone can see their business easily on LinkedIn and have that real network. So that's, that's really my, my place. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I'm happy to answer questions. I am speaking um, at Ramp Up in San Francisco on the 5th of March. I'm also speaking uh, in Bali on the 28th uh, at a conference there. Um, so you can hear me talk there. And I'm talking a lot about content there. So that might Ooh. be interesting. Um, yeah. 
digital marketing and and, and blockchain as to how they, they interact as well. Um, so some really interesting things. Um, yeah, we've also got a lot of very interesting um, things coming up at Finder. So yeah, pretty exciting. Mate, cool, man. That's so awesome. Thank, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Peace out. Cool. Cheers, guys.